Hey kids, how you going? Ah, uh, look, can you guess where I am? Still in the church, but you can't be with us this week because it's a bit complicated with all the uh, COVID-19 stuff that we have to do. So, here we are in the church. Now, I wonder how many of you have already worked out there's something different. You remember last week when we did this? I wonder what the difference is. I think it might be something to do with this. Today, it's red. That's because this Sunday is the day of Pentecost. And Pentecost, we use the colour red. Because red represents, for us at this time, the Holy Spirit. And that's what Pentecost is all about. So today, we're going to hear the story of the Holy Spirit coming to uh, the uh, apostles on the day of Pentecost. And what it did for them, and what it does for all of us. And we're going to talk about what the Holy Spirit is, what he does, and the ways he is depicted uh, throughout all the Bible. So, here we are. Let us begin. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us pray. I haven't got the right page. Sorry about that, kids. Here it is. Good stuff. Let us pray. Holy Spirit of God, blowing through creation. No door can keep you out. Unlock our hearts, breathe on us anew, that we may speak God's words of life. With the Father and the Son, you live and reign, one God, now and forever. Amen. So the Holy Spirit, we spend most of our time, if you think about it, guys, we spend most of our time talking about Jesus, don't we? It's good, we need to talk about him, and he's pretty cool. But we do need to speak about the Holy Spirit. And today, uh, this weekend, for Pentecost, is the time we really talk about that. So let's find in the Bible where we really hear about the Holy Spirit. There's quite a few stories that have the Holy Spirit in them, but there's one really big one. And here it is. You'll be pleased to know I remembered the Bible today with the pictures in it. And there's my page. Here it is. Remember last week we had Jesus ascending? Do you remember that? Jesus went up towards heaven in a cloud. His disciples stared at the sky for a long time. All of a sudden, two angels appeared. They asked, why are you standing here looking at the sky? Jesus will return the same way you saw him go. There they are. Then the disciples remembered what Jesus had said. See, there they are, remembering him. They returned to Jerusalem and waited for the Holy Spirit to come. So, here we go. This is from a, a book in the Bible called the Book of Acts, which is not a gospel. Uh, it's not one of the letters. It's not the Book of Revelation or anything like that. It's its own kind of book. The, kind of, the Book of Acts tells us the story of the church after Jesus ascended. And at this point here is where it begins. Thousands of people went to Jerusalem to celebrate a Jewish holiday called Pentecost. They came from many countries and spoke many different languages. Jesus' disciples were staying here. They were praying together. They were very happy about it. So there they are in their room. Suddenly, a noise filled the room. It, surround, it sounded like a strong wind blowing. The Holy Spirit appeared as tongues of fire on each of the disciples. They started talking in languages they did not know. The people in Jerusalem heard the noise and came to see what was happening. The crowd was amazed and asked, how are you able to speak our languages? Peter said, the prophets told us this would happen. Then Peter told them about God's plan. God sent Jesus to save everyone from the bad things they have done. The people asked, what should we do? 
Peter replied, Ask Jesus to forgive you for your sins and to be baptised in the name of Jesus Christ. That day, 3,000 people believed in Jesus. The disciples baptised all of them. Hard to find the page. And that'll do us, I think. Imagine baptising 3,000 people in one day. Good Lord. It's a lot of work. 3,000 people in one day. One of you guys that's really good at maths, could you work out how many kids we would need to baptise every hour to baptise 3,000 people? It's a lot of kids, isn't it? Wow. Your hands would get all wrinkled because it would be so wet with the water. So what do you think about this Holy Spirit? The Bible told us today that uh, it sounded like a strong wind blowing and the Holy Spirit appeared as tongues of fire on each of the disciples. So when the Holy Spirit first came to the church, it looked like tongues of fire landing on each of uh, the disciples' shoulders. I wonder how those disciples felt when that happened. I wonder if they were a bit scared. I think I'd be a bit scared if bits of flame turned up on my shoulders. I think, what would you think? It'd be a bit scary, wouldn't it? But they knew it was to happen. The Holy Spirit is depicted in a few ways in the Bible. I wonder if any of you can remember another time in the Bible that we hear about the Holy Spirit, but not as tongues of fire, but something else. Can any of you remember that? I'll give you a clue. It happens uh, early on in Jesus' ministry, right at the beginning. Now I'm going to find it in here, and it'll tell us. Gabriel tells us when he goes to see Mary, what does he say? He says, oh crikey, I can't find the page. You'd think I'd have better bookmarks, wouldn't you? Oh, I haven't today. I'm sorry, kids. Oh, it doesn't say it in this Bible anyway. Good Lord. Gabriel tells Mary that the Holy Spirit will come upon her and she will have uh, her child. And they are to name him Jesus. That's the first time we meet the Holy Spirit, but there is another time. It's even more important. And here it is. John took Jesus into the Jordan River and baptised him. The Holy Spirit came down from heaven in the form of a dove. It landed on Jesus. Jesus smiled. Then God said, this is my son. I love him and I'm very pleased with him. So when we first meet the Holy Spirit, really, in the Bible, it is as a dove landing on Jesus when he's baptised. Then later on, after Jesus has ascended, the Holy Spirit comes to us as flames on the disciples' shoulders. What if I was to say to you that the Holy Spirit is still with us today? It is the Holy Spirit that keeps our church going. It's the Holy Spirit that inspires all of us to do the things we do. It's the Holy Spirit. You know, at the Mass, when we normally at Mass, I ask the Holy Spirit to come upon the bread and the wine to make them the body and blood of Christ. The Holy Spirit still works with us. The Holy Spirit uh, inspires and leads us as followers of Christ. Jesus can't be with us now in the way that he used to because he is now in heaven with God, uh, God the Father. But it is the Holy Spirit who is still with us and moves through our world to this very day, at this very moment. Very exciting. And this Sunday, the day of Pentecost, is the day we celebrate that. It's the day we become very aware of the Spirit leading us in all we do and say as a church. So we, on this day, we say special prayers and we ask for the Holy Spirit to guide us and lead us in the things that we need to be doing. So, this Sunday is our first Sunday back at church with all the people being able to be uh, in the church with us. The last two Sundays we've only been allowed 10 people. This Sunday we're allowed 100. Do that times 10. 100 people may be at church. I don't think we'll have that many, to be honest, but anyway. 
100 people are able to be at church. We're all able to be together and all are going to pray for the Spirit to lead us where we need to be. And the way that will work is that we'll pray and we'll ask the Spirit to guide us. What kinds of things do we need to be doing? What kinds of things do we need to be saying uh, so people can know of God's word in the world? I wonder what you could do. I wonder what things you could be praying for this weekend for our school and for our church. Maybe you could ask the Spirit to help you uh, figure out what you need to be doing to be a follower of Christ. Maybe you could be praying and ask for the Holy Spirit to strengthen you so you can keep working hard at school, so you can keep following the ways of Jesus. Maybe that's what you could be doing. We understand the Spirit as something that uh, we can't see, but we can feel. Sometimes you feel the Holy Spirit within you as a nice, warm, loving glow. Other times you just it'll feel like just a, a, a brush against you. The Holy Spirit is very real and we need to make sure that we all know that he is guiding us in all we do, say and be. The thing is, with the Holy Spirit, he's not as easy to uh, talk about as Jesus is. Because with Jesus, we are left with the story of everything he did and said uh, and healed and all those things. With the Holy Spirit, it's working through other people. So, when the Spirit landed on all the disciples, what happened to them? They went out of the room they were in. The first thing they did was leave where they were and went out into the world to tell them the good news of forgiveness and love of God that has been found in Jesus Christ. But the other thing they were able to do, they were able to say it in any language they needed to. Do you think maybe if the Holy Spirit landed on us, we could all speak whatever language we needed to? Well, I'm not banking on that this Sunday, I've got to be honest. I'm not thinking that the Holy Spirit will come on me and all of a sudden I'll be able to speak uh, any language I need to. But what I do know is that the Holy Spirit will guide me to be able to speak in the way that I need to. The Spirit will give me the words that I need to be able to say to the people I meet and to the words that I preach. And the Holy Spirit will give all of our church the gifts that we need to be able to proclaim Jesus and his, his forgiveness and God's love to all the people in our community may sound the same words that we normally would speak, but we know that they are inspired by the Holy Spirit. So it's all very exciting, and that's why we've got this lovely red thing behind us today. It's called a frontal. It changes colours with the seasons. Now you may think, may go, why is Father Chris sitting on a step instead of on a table and we're in a different position? I want to show you something. Look how we have to have the church set up. It's a bit messy in the middle there. Look how we have to have the church set up now. We can't have all the all the seats have to be. Uh... Can you see all that? They all have to be separated up a lot more. We can't have everyone being where they normally would. We have to have more space. And if we come round here, this is a bit exciting, isn't it? Wandering round. I want to show you something else. We have to have hand sanitizer. And look at this. All the pews have to be separated up a lot more. More room. Can you see all that? Good. One more thing. This here is our Easter candle that we had when we were doing services from my house. It's a very funny little candle. See? But look at this. Here we're getting our proper Easter candle this Sunday. This Sunday I'm going to light this big candle from the little Easter candle that I had at home. Bringing the Easter candle from my house to the church this Sunday. So that's pretty exciting. And there was one other thing, that's right, the lovely flowers we've got today. 
Look at that. Red flowers. This is what we have at Pentecost. We have beautiful red flowers to remind us of the Holy Spirit. Back to my seat. I've got to work my way through all these chairs here. Right. So, kids, now next week, next Friday, we won't be doing this online like this. We should all be back at church. So, it's gone on a funny angle. So next, Sun, next Friday, we'll be back at church. Now, I'm not exactly sure how that service will work. It will be a little bit different than what we normally do. It may not, more than likely won't be a communion service, but we'll still have some servers doing things. We'll probably still have the incense and those kinds of things. There's a few things we've got to work out because of, uh, we have to be safe and, uh, because of COVID-19. So this will be the last online talk that I do for you, actually. It's been really great doing it in this way. I actually quite enjoyed it. I hope you have too. But I'll see you all, I won't see you on Monday because we're all on holiday. I'll see you all during the week next week. And I'll see you all in church next Friday as we all pray together and sing together and thank God for all that he has given us. Thanks for being with us, kids. Let us have the blessing. Peace of God which passes all understanding. Keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of the Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you always. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord in the name of Christ. Amen. See you, kids.